Okay, so we've just concluded a workshop um, where you've attempted to identify steps which essentially turn into scenes for your story. Um, for your screenplay, your short film, your feature film, whatever it is you're writing. We're trying to get the beginning, middle, and end in the basic scenes for your movie. Um, what I'm looking for, as, as I said, we're looking for which character is driving the scene. What is the conflict? Is the conflict with another character? Is the conflict with a, an obstacle? Could it be time? Um, could, could it be you know, a, an actual physical obstacle that needs to be overcome? Um, whatever it is, I want it as specific as possible. If you have two or three um, sentences, a paragraph that summarizes atmosphere, that summarizes location, that talks about exposition, what it is you're trying to accomplish, we're showing that someone's going to fall in love here, we're going to show that someone's in danger here. I want you to be able to reduce it to a conflict, right? A conflict that can be stated, your character driving this scene is trying to accomplish this and this is the conflict that he she or they must overcome and ideally not required because you're writing your own story but ideally i'm interested in what happens and why am i interested in what happens the conflict is good or bad it'll help me determine um it, how the scene fits into the overall story. This is a step forward, this is a step back, this is a step forward, this is a step back. When we get into detailed scene writing, we're gonna, of course, look at you know how all of the scenes fit together, but this is just sort of an overview. And the point of what I'm doing is to show you that what your outline really is, it's your story. You have written your story by putting down character conflict and outcome at a minimum, let's say it's a feature, a minimum of 30, you know, hopefully more than 30, but a minimum of 30 with all of the turning points that I talked about in the last lecture, what it takes to establish a first act, second act, third act, asking all the questions for your story. If it's a short film, right, make it proportionate, right? Short film should, you know, 10, 15 scenes would be about right, you know, or less, but whatever it is, I want it to reflect your story from beginning, beginning, middle, and end. Um, once you get that down, then we're going to not only be looking at how your story works, you know, going from top to bottom, but going from left to right, you know, but going from left to right. This is the horizontal versus the vertical story. It's really integrated, right? So I'm going to share my screen, and all we're going to do today is we're going to look at uh, an outline for from a fantastic uh, movie that we've talked about in this class. Um, that'll encourage you to watch uh, and read a movie called Whiplash, uh, written uh, by Damien Chazelle. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to get rid of this. And you can see in here we have, um, we have outline, right? Here's the outline. This is what we talked about. This is what everybody should have right now. You know, everybody, everybody who's gone along, whether it's a short film or feature film, it's 39 scenes, proposed scenes, right? We have the a character clearly in the opening scene, Andrew, he's our protagonist. He's playing drums in the practice room, right? It's his first location, right? Fletcher wanders in and tests him. Fletcher is the antagonist, right? And Fletcher is the person in Whiplash who Andrew needs to convince, right? He tests him. And I guess if you could add detail is Andrew fails the test, right? But the, the conflict is Andrew's playing drums, F Fletcher comes in, test him, right? That is that is one sentence. It could be written as a paragraph. Andrew, you know, you know is in the room. He's in the, he's in the, the, the rehearsal room. He's been playing for hours. You can give me why he's in the room. He's in the room because he's tries to, he wants to, and, uh, you know, get in Fletcher's band, all of that, we won't see that in the scene, right? That Andrew is practicing because he's trying to impress Fletcher. All I need is Andrew's playing drums, Fletcher wanders in, test him, right? That's all I need. And that line, that one line that a lot of you have a paragraph, but a lot of you will have the line, it's just Andrew plays drum, Fletcher comes in. That's not enough. I want the conflict. He's going to test him. Test implies conflict. If you have a big paragraph explaining how the room is and what the school's all about, that's wonderful information for you. Not necessarily 
um, what we need to write the scene. This is what it is. It, here, here's a screenplay, and we're going to go into in the in the next uh, lecture. We'll go into the parts of the screenplay. You know, so don't worry about it if you don't understand this now. That what is a slug line? What how does description work? I just want you to know at this point that it's really simple. A screenplay is not a novel. A screenplay, if you just look, there's not much here. This is the first scene, right? This one sentence, Anders playing drums, Fletcher, Fletcher wanders in and tests him, starts here and it ends right here, right? It's two and a half pages. But look at that one sentence, it's two and a half pages. And look, there's not much on this page, right? There's not much on this page, but it gives me who's the character and who's actively testing Andrew in this. It's Fletcher, right? All of this, Andrew's playing drums in the prox room, Fletcher wanders in, turns into this. Look how much more is in here. Black, we hear a hit, a drumstick against a drum head, crisp, sharp, then a second hit, then the third, fourth. The hits growing so fast, they start to blur together like gunfire, right? That's not in the sentence that I asked for. You might put that in, right? That, you know, we're in, we're in a room, it's black, you, I, not required, right? No, it's not in the scene. Here we are. This is called a slug line, right? This tells us where we are. When I get into formatting, detailed formatting, I'll tell you that slug line's purpose is really to schedule and budget a movie. But for you, it lets us know where we are. We're at interior NASA rehearsal studio, Gehrig Hall night. Boom, right? Now we're gonna say where we are quickly. This is what a screenplay does. Quickly where we are, right? He's playing drums in the practice room. Now we're gonna describe, briefly describe the practice room. A cavernous space, soundproof walls, and in the center, a drum set. Seated at it in a sweat marked white tee, I zeroed on a single stroke roll is Andrew Namath. None of that is in here, right? He's just playing drums, right? Now we're gonna get a little description. This is not in here either. He's 19, slight honor student, skinny. Remember when we talked about characters, I want you, right? I want you to tell me the type. And this is where, when you, when you pitch your story to me, when you have the type in your story, this comes into your screenplay, right? He's honor student, skinny, it's beautiful, except for his arm, which is built from years and years of drumming, right? Boom, new paragraph. And then when we get really into the details of writing scenes, you'll realize that every time there's a paragraph implies a movement forward, a new camera setup in the screenplay. The great thing about a screenplay, and it really was a game changer to me when somebody pointed this out to me, is you don't need to put shots in. You just write in the present tense what is going on, who's in the room, why they're in the room, right? Cavernous space, we see Andrew. Boom, we sort of focus on him. This might mean that the camera moved for a close up without saying it. Suddenly, right, new beat, that's the camera shift. A man enters the practice room, stopping, rising. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay, stay there. See how easy dialogue is? And great thing about dialogue, you just write it as people really talk, right? The man steps forward, removes his coat. He's tall, late 50s, black t shirt, black slacks, black shoes will know him as Fletcher, right? One, two and a half sentences Fletcher's described. He's in there. He's an intimidating presence. The room is silent now. And then softly as one of those people whose whispers can scare the crap out of you, look at the dialogue, it just flows. What's your name? Andrew Neyman, sir, it's pronounced Neyman. What year are you? I'm a first year, sir. You know who I am? Yes. You know what I do? Yes, right? This is Fletcher wandering in and testing him, right? You don't say anything about Fletcher or Andrew in here. So you know I'm looking for players. Bing, 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 bing. This is what the scene's about. Yes, then why did you stop playing? Beat, Andrew nods, smiles, right? We're describing important nods, gestures, right? He gets it, summons all of his remaining energy and resumes playing trying to really show off this time. Rolls, fills, speedy stick work, he finishes. None of that in playing drums, none of that in the test, right? This is the detail. This is the difference between a scene and an outline. The outline has beginning, middle, and end. The scene has more meat to it. Did I say to start playing again? Andrew looks at him. I thought, then blanching, parenthetical, we'll get into what that is, but it's how the line is said. 
I'm sorry, I missed I asked you why you stopped playing. Your version of an answer was to turn into a wind up drummer monkey, right? Fantastic, right? I'm sorry, I stopped playing because, notice this is the interruption, just the dash, show me your rudiments. Test is on, the heart of the scene is going. Andrew nods, played one rudiment after another, double stroke, roll, paradiddle, flam, flam diddle, uh-huh, double time swing. Fletcher begins clapping, his hand in time, fast. Andrew plays, no, double time, double it. Bop, 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 bop. Andrew tries doubling the tempo, he can't. Fletcher stops clapping, the sign of death. Andrew keeps playing, I shut. Then he hears the door close. He stops, looks up, Fletcher has left the room. A moment later, the door opens and we'll go over why you capitalize things, right? This, in this time is for emphasis. It's Fletcher, Andrew's eyes wide. Maybe it's not over. Whoopsie daisy, forgot my code. Fletcher grabs it, steps back out, closes the door, Andrew stares ahead, alone again at the drums and totally deflated. It's over. First time we see a camera direction right here, wide shot of the band room, a title card. Ah, this is gonna be on the screen. We'll go into all of how you do this. Schaefer Conservatory of Music of Fall Semester. This is why at the beginning, of class, I said, I need everyone to read a screenplay, a screenplay that will help you write your movie, right? And not only help you write your movie tonally, but this is the practical reason you read a screenplay. You just learned how to write with black. You just learned how to pop into a room. You just learned how to cut from one scene to another, right? You just learned how to put title cards in. The more you read, the more you learn. Right. All of a sudden, we're New York um, Street, Schaefer Conservatory night. He exits, hurries off. We're moving into the rest of it. Look at this. This all comes out of one little line, right? To a scene that has lots of detail and color. Now, one the one thing that you notice in the scene, it's just the essential action and the dialogue. Right, essential action of dialogue. And what I'm gonna show you now, I have this list, you all have this, this list, and this is in my, we're gonna go through all of these scenes in the advanced scene writing, right? Um, and Whiplash, Whiplash and Lady Bird, I love to, to teach these because of the opening scenes. Now, I am going to, um, I am going to, uh, play you Whiplash. Now, Go ahead and go out onto YouTube and get it yourself. It'll be clear, right? It'll be clear. Um, so I'm going to quickly stop the, the share for the class, for the recording of the class, but I'm going to play this for the class, right? And the reason I'm, I don't want to embed it, be, but no, they just go whiplash opening scene. That's all you got to do. But I'm going to stop the share um, and I'm going to um, stop recording and I will be back at, at the end after I play this. But go ahead, go out find that scene, right? All right, now that everybody has seen that video, I'm going to reshare the screen and talk to you guys about uh, why, or the difference of what we just witnessed. Now, one sentence turned into quite a bit here, right? All of the, this is description, this is, location this is dialogue right and it seems a lot pretty complex but when we went into this link here and you saw the scene i hope you get the idea of how much more complex a movie is than a screenplay there was a black that popped right sound none of that was in here right we hear a hit right we hear a hit, a drumstick, a drum head, Chris Sharp, then a second hit, then a third or the fourth, like gunfire. There was no pop in the, in the movie we just saw. It's just, here we are, we're in a cavernous space. Did you notice the beginning, how the camera moves down the hall? It's coming down the hall. That's not in the screenplay. That's what a director does. A director's moving the camera. A director's figuring out where the camera goes. And really that's a POV a Fletcher walking down the hallway. He's gonna meet, name it. All of this, right, that we see, right, it's your, in the screenplay, what you're putting is, is very simple. It's as simple in the screenplay when you're comparing the screenplay to the movie as is when you're doing the outline to the scene. You're really fleshing the scene out, but you're not worrying about 
color. You're not worrying about shots. You're not worrying about movement. You were just taking this conflict and playing it out with action. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. The man steps forward, removes his coat. It's silent. Now, what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Andrew Naiman, sir. What year are you? First year. You know who I am? Yeah. You know what I do? Yes. Um, you know, I'm looking for players. Boom. Scene is on, right? There is so much. We're not saying cut here, back and forth. All of that is in the movie that we watched, right? I don't want you to think that you are writing a movie. You are writing a screenplay. This is an accessible form. This is the point of cl the class today is that if you can get your outlines down by next class, if you can take it from those big paragraphs that some of you are writing, or to at least giving me a verb that implies the conflict, those of you who are just listing out events, right? Give me conflict, give me reduction that can be turned into a scene, a character who is being tested, a character who's being challenged in the scene. That, and, I, and then just put them in order. This is the order, right? This is where your movie goes. I'm going to evaluate when you send me your outlines. And whenever you look at an outline, always evaluate it. How quickly did you set it up? Do you have it set up if it's a feature in 10 to 15 scenes, right? How are you testing your character as we're going through? How are you challenging your character? How are you paying it off, right? How are you paying up? This will not have every scene in the movie. This will not have every scene in the movie, right? This, this will translate. As you begin to write, more scenes will occur to you that are what? On your spine, that are important, right? But a study, right? A study, you reading an outline. You reading an outline or you reading a screenplay and turning it into an outline for this class is very important. The most important thing that you can do to be a screenwriter or to write screenplays is to get into a habit of reading screenplays. Read, read, read screenplays. And know that when you do your outlines, that one conflict turns into a scene, that one conflict turns into a scene. Our entire class now is going to move from me evaluating your outlines. And those of you who don't have me to evaluate, your outlines. The outline should, again, have a beginning, middle, and end that tells a story, right, that goes up and down, but then we sh you should spend the time to go across, right? Who's driving the scene? What's the conflict? What happens? And how do they all connect? Remember, we talked about this in the checking your story in the scene. Every single scene causes or is connected to the next scene is connected to the next scene it's a build it's a build it's a build and suddenly we have a story that we care about suddenly we have characters that we care about right and these scenes all add up you're just taking this outline and you're turning it in, into scenes on the page and these don't have to be perfect right your outline does not need to be perfect at first right you sharpen your outline so at least I can see scenes of conflict in your outline that have beginning, middle, and end to the scenes, beginning and middle and end to the story. Within the class shifts into, and I'll tell you, this is one of the easiest things you will do, is this, is to write the screenplay if you have this done. You must have this done, right? You must have this done, and then you will be able to do this. You must have the outline done. And I'm not saying you need every scene in the outline. You need all the crucial scenes. And this is really creative. If I'm hoping I prove to you that this one line, there's a lot of creativity, but it gives you a structure to be creative in. It gives you the conflict, the scene as a structure to be creative in. Everything we've talked about up to here. Oh, your whole movie is, a, is one giant conflict that plays out. Every scene is a conflict that plays out. Now we practically have to do it. Um, what I would like you guys to do is I would like you to get screenwriting software. It's everywhere. Um, it's everywhere. If you can get final draft, get final draft. Final draft is what, you know, we use final draft is the industry standard, but you don't need final draft. I have students who use cell text, right? It's free. Um, I have the students who use writers duet. It's free, right? Find some software, right? And it doesn't matter. Um, if you only get, you know, if it, how, how many uses you can get out of it, right? Um, sometimes it'll let you write one screenplay and then it'll watermark it. For this class, we're not worried about selling your screenplays. We're just worried about learning the form. But I want you to begin to know how to, you know, how to, how to familiarize yourself with this format so we can turn your steps into scenes, steps into scenes. After we turn steps into scenes, then we're going to make scenes better. 
We're going to make sure scenes matter. We're going to make sure scenes are better. But this is just the transition. I need to make sure you have a movie. Remember, this was a test. If you can list 30 plus scenes, you have a feature. If you can show beginning, middle, end, you have a short. If you can show 20 or, or so, maybe you have the, the your pilot episode ready. As long as it has that beginning, middle, and end structure. What we need to do now is we need to turn it into something. And the something we're turning it into is not as hard as most people think. It's really not. As long as you have a conflict, the form is easy to teach. The description is not that hard. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a whole list of principles to follow when writing description and dialogue, right? And then we're gonna do that. You're just gonna write description and dialogue and then we're gonna sharpen them, right? We're just gonna enter into the next phase, next phase. And I'm gonna spend the time with uh, with you guys really looking at lots of different scenes and formatting, um, just so you guys can make sure that you understand. This is not that hard. It's an accessible form. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting your complete outlines, and then we're gonna shift into making